I learned a new word today. It's neo-segregation. What led me to learn about this new word was I was at the OSNA website of Waldorf Education. I came across an article called Waldorf Community of Color Affinity Group. The Waldorf Community of Color Affinity Group, facilitated by a parent of the Green Meadow Waldorf School, has been created for Waldorf community members to share and support each other in racial conversations. This affinity group is open to current and past Waldorf parents of color and any individual of color affiliated with Waldorf education in North America. Whenever I hear it's open to people of color, I always hear that to mean it's open to everybody except if you are white. To follow this discussion, I needed to learn more about critical race theory, so I went to a website that has some key critical race theory concepts, and one is race essentialism. It says, critical race theory reduces individuals to the quasi-metaphysical categories of blackness and whiteness, then loads these those categories with value connotations. Positive traits are attributed to blackness or people of color, and negative traits are attributed to whiteness. And there's another term that we need that I looked up. It's neo-segregation. Critical race theorists endorse a new form of racial segregation, often called racial affinity groups or racial caucuses with separate meetings, facilities, living quarters, and training programs for whites and racial minorities. The assumption is that whites must do the work to address their internalized racial superiority and racial minorities must be protected from invasive whiteness. Some more research took me to OSNA's DEI and Racial Equity Plan. This had many OSNA objectives, initial actions to be taken during the 2021 school year by OSNA leadership. And this lists many things. One of them was support affinity networking groups. So it's part of the big plan of OSNA uh, to, to get these affinity groups going. There's some major problems with these groups, though. There's political implications, there's uh, legal implications, and it's also, also questionable if this really supports the Waldorf method of education. I mentioned this article about affinity groups uh, to a Waldorf teacher, and she sent me this email to explain how the Waldorf method works when it comes to diversity of culture. Once a community of families has formed, then it's up to the individuals to contribute out of their diverse cultural experiences what is unique and appropriate. Tell African stories or cook Indian food or celebrate Chinese New Year with the whole class. Whatever is living in the individuals can be infused into that group and each class would ideally be different accordingly. So, according to the Waldorf method, the diversity, the cultural diversity of the students is shared among the whole class so that everyone can be enriched. Now, that makes sense, doesn't it? Here's an article about how controversial politically this topic is and how it drags the Waldorf schools into the middle of the hottest political controversy in the country. I mean, do we really want our children in the middle of that? Former Georgia teacher says critical race theory should be out of classrooms. This is neo-segregation. Cherokee County Schools vow to prohibit critical race theory teachings. That's a school, this article is about a school board who is banning critical race theory in their schools. A former Georgia second grade teacher said on Wednesday that critical race theory should not be in classrooms 
because it amounts to pushing neo-segregation onto children. Stokes said that her views on critical race theory stem from research, which she said traces all the way back to Marxist roots. It is a divisive ideology, she added. Well, this is the thing. It's very important when it comes to critical race theory to do research outside your bubble of information. If, you, if, you're, if you're just getting it from one side and do some further research to, to listen to the opposing views of those who consider it a bad idea and uh, do some research. Where are these, the history of these ideas? Where they came from? Why was critical race theory developed? What is its real intention? And why some people are so upset. Mentioning the hard work the United States has done to move beyond racial differences, she claimed that the government is seeking to mandate racial segregation on children again. It is intended to divide them into affinity groups. They are oppressor or they are the oppressed. It focuses on collective guilt. If you're white, we're going to white shame you. We're going to make you atone for your white privilege and your internalized racial white privilege. And also, it's very much neo-segregation, Stokes said. Now, there's also legal ramifications. This took me to an employment law website where, with the headline, Today's Affinity Groups risks and rewards, discrimination concerns. Some employers have faced class action civil rights lawsuits filed by white male employees alleging that they were fired or suffered some other adverse action because of their gender and race. Some plaintiffs, some plaintiffs in such lawsuits have pointed to corporate diversity initiatives like ERGs which is their name for affinity groups, as evidence of the discrimination they purportedly faced at the office. There's many organizations now that are, are asking people to come forward so they can start doing some test lawsuits to try to uh, end this through the legal system, through, through suing schools and employers. That's why they say if you're involved in, the, in these situations, that you need to take note of everything, maintain documents, keep track of everything so that, that you can remember and have, have all the, uh, the evidence that you need if you need to go to a lawyer. There's lawyers that are willing to fight for you if you've been discriminated against at no charge to you. Then I went to the Waldorf School of Atlanta website after I was uh, searching for Waldorf affinity groups, found this offerings from the DEI committee. They had just studied the book about white supremacy and being inspired from this white supremacy book, they were looking forward to starting two affinity groups, uh, one for people of color and one for white people. The people of color would split off from the white people uh, where the white people could work on their their shame and white privilege and the, and the people of color could work on their supporting each other in their oppression. So this, then I was led to the Waldorf School of Pittsburgh where I came across the input needed for WSP affinity groups. The Waldorf School of Pittsburgh Equity, Diversity, and Inclusion Committee is seeking input from the WSP community to assess whether families would welcome the development of affinity groups. Well, I would hope that if this question comes up in your Waldorf School, that you give it a resounding no because of the political controversy that it will bring to your school, to the possible lawsuits they could bring to your school, and this really has nothing to do with the Waldorf method. 